Hello friends, this is Ali from Product Analytics Academy and today we're going to learn how to create an event tracking plan for product analytics. A tracking plan is essentially a detailed list of user actions that you're going to be tracking in your product and sending to tools like Mixpanel, Amplitude, and Heap. You'll then use this data to build dashboards like the one you see on your screen here, this one's on Mixpanel, that answer key questions like your weekly active user count, your activation rate, your engagement rate, and so on. What you see on screen here is just an example of a tracking plan. This particular one is made for a video sharing platform just like YouTube, so it has actions like video viewed, video published, channel subscribed, comment made, the kind of thing you're all very familiar with. In general, data that is tracked and sent to platforms like Mixpanel Amplitude follows an event and property format. Each data point represents a timestamped user action, and each data point is referred to as an event. The name of the event is the action that occurred. Properties refer to attributes of that action, attributes that provide context for the action that was taken. So for example, if we have an event like viewing a video, then the name of the video and its video category, essentially its genre, those would be attributes for it. For an event like publishing, the length of the video or the channel that it's published to would be the attributes that we track for it. So these attributes are referred to as event properties or properties for short. Together, the events and properties allow you to answer the questions you need to answer in order to understand your product better. Once you make a tracking plan, you give it to your developers who will insert code snippets into the product to track each of these actions. Every time the user does one of these actions, the code snippet runs and a data point is sent to your tool of choice. After that, you take those data points and you build dashboards like the one that you see here. There are a few different tracking plan templates available online. This one is my own and I'll share a link to it at the bottom of the video in case you want to use it. So let's go over the columns that are in it. First, we have the event name. Straightforward, this is the name of the event, which is the action that occurred. Note that we always use the same casing and verb tense for all events. I like to capitalize each word of the event name and put spaces in between. I also follow what's called the object action framework. Basically, the first word of the event name is the object that the action is taken on, and the following words are a description of the action. So for example, video viewed. The first word, video, is the object, and viewed is the action that is taken on. Video published, same thing. Video like, comment made. You can see what I'm doing here. You don't have to follow this exact format. The most important thing is that you just pick a specific one and stick with it without any deviations, especially because tools like Mixpanel and Amplitude are case sensitive. So if you track the same event name, but just change the casing a little bit, like capitalize this M in one case and not capitalize in others, it's gonna get tracked as two separate events and mess up your data. Next up, you have the trigger column, also sometimes referred to as just description because it's just a description of the actions that trigger that event. You want to be as specific as possible here and make sure that you tell your developers that the events need to be triggered when the action is fully completed. For example, if there's a publish button, they have to click to publish a video, then the event should not trigger when that button is clicked, but rather when the publishing is completed. That way, instances where the user clicks the publish button and gets an error won't incorrectly create a video published event. Next, we have the list of properties for each event. Try to be as specific with your property names as possible. So instead of just saying, you know, name as your property, say video name, channel name. That way you can differentiate between different things like video name, channel name, username, things like that. This column is pretty self-explanatory, just a brief description of what each property tracks. Next up, we have the data type. So if what you're tracking is made up of letters and numbers, or just letters, then it would be a string. If it's just numbers and you want to do arithmetic on those numbers, then it would be a number type. If it's just true or false values, then it would be a Boolean. And last but not least, a couple of sample values for each property. This is a super helpful column because it really helps your developers understand exactly what you're referring to when you say what you want to track by this property. 
Now that we know what a tracking plan is for and what it looks like, let's learn how to make one the right way. The key to making a good tracking plan is to start from the questions you want to answer about your product and build your plan around them. I work with startups as a consultant to implement tools like Mixpanel and Amplitude, and the single most common mistake I see them make is that they go, we're just going to track everything, that way we can answer any question we want later. It does not work that way. You can't track everything. The data you track needs to have the right structure to be able to answer your specific questions. If you just go with that method of tracking everything, you'll end up with noisy, messy data that doesn't help you at all. So if there's one thing you take away from this video, let it be this. Always start with the questions and metrics that you want to answer and track and build your tracking plan around that. Now we're going to do this together so you can learn exactly how it's done. We're going to build this tracking plan that we saw here for a video sharing platform just like YouTube. Like I said, the first thing you need to do is come up with a list of questions and metrics. For our case, I've already developed those and put them here in their own separate sheet. I recommend you do the same. If you don't have metrics already and aren't sure how to come up with good ones, I have a separate video called a Complete Guide to Product Success Metrics, which you can watch and learn how to make great KPIs for your product. I'll link to it in the video description. I use the same method to develop the ones that you see over here. In addition to the metrics, I've also listed a few general questions which we'll look to be answering with the data we track as well, like what channels get the most views, what category of videos gets the most views, how many minutes of videos are published every day, that sort of thing. All right, let's start at the top. The first metric we have is weekly active users, and we define active users as anyone who has watched a video. So we need an event for when a user views a video. Let's add it to our blank tracking plan. So here I have a sheet. It has the exact same template as the one you saw earlier, just completely blank. So we're going to fill it out together. All right, we need an event for viewing a video. Object action framework, remember. So we go video viewed as the name of the event. The description is a user has viewed at least five seconds of a video. Notice how I'm specific here because a view can be interpreted multiple different ways and you don't want to leave it to your developers to decide it on the fly. So I specify at least five seconds of a video is what triggers a video viewed event. And that's all we need for now, just to be able to track our weekly active users when an active user is defined as anybody who has watched a video. Next up, we have the activation rate, which we define as a conversion from signing up to watching a video. We already have an event for when a video is watched. So next up, we need to add one for signing up. So I'm going to say sign up completed. A new user has signed up for an account. All right, now we're going to be able to track the conversion rate from the first action to the second one. Essentially, we'll divide the number of people that have triggered the first event, which is video viewed, by the number of people who have triggered the second event, sign up completed. That's how we get the activation rate. It's an example of what you saw over here in this dashboard. By the way, this dashboard was created in another video that I have called Build Your First Mix Panel Dashboard. So if you want to refer and see how this got created, just make sure to check out that other video. All right, after that, we have the engagement rate. The engagement is simply the average number of videos watched per user. We already have an event for videos watched, so we don't need to add anything else there. It's already covered. Great. We also have 14 day retention rate which is the percentage of users, signed up users, who continue to watch videos 14 days after sign up. Okay, we have an event for signing up and we have an event for watching videos. Again, we're set. So see what's going on here? Just by having two well thought out events, you're able to get four of your core KPIs very easily tracked within the tool. That's all you need to be able to answer these four metrics when they're defined correctly and when you build your tracking plan correctly. Now we move on to our questions. Let's start at the top again. Which channels get the most views? Well, we track the video getting viewed, but there's no information that says what channels it's on. This is where the properties come in. So I'm going to come over here for the video viewed event, and I'm going to add a property called channel name. The definition is name of the channel the video is on. The property data type is just going to be a string because, you know, the name will be something like my channel name, Product Analytics Academy. There we go. 
our first event property added. Going back here, second one says, what category of videos get the most views? Again, we have video views, but we don't have an event for the category or genre of the video. So I'm gonna add one and notice, like I said before, I give properties descriptive names. I don't just say category, I don't just say name, I say channel name, I say video category. So I'm gonna say category genre of the video string. I'm gonna call it science and technology. All right. Next up we have how many minutes of videos are published every day? Well, this one is actually twofold. So it's saying, hey, we need to know an event for published. Note, this is not viewing, it's publishing. And we don't have an event for publishing. So we're gonna to have to add that. And we need to know how many minutes of it were published every day. So come over here and we create video published. User has published a video to the platform. Great. And then the next thing that we want to track is remember, this is just the event. So if we just wanted to see how many videos are published, this would be enough. But we also want to know how many minutes of it. So I'm going to have a property called video duration. And I'm going to specify the duration of a video in minutes. This is what we're saying about being specific. You don't want your developer thinking it's seconds or one developer thinking it's seconds and the other one thinks it's minutes so it gets messed up. Just be specific. Because this one's a number and we're probably gonna to wanna to find like averages and things, so we're gonna track this as a number instead. And just throw in you know, a random number as a sample value. Then what portion of viewers convert to content creators? Content creator is anybody who publishes a video. We actually don't need anything extra for this because we have the people who are viewing videos and we have the people who are publishing, so this is all we need. Good enough. Move on to the last one. Which channel has the most videos published? Okay, our video viewed event has channel name, but our video published event doesn't. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna copy it over here so that we make sure we have channel name here as well. And that, this very simple three event tracking plan that you see here, it answers a bunch of key questions and all of our core metrics. This goes back to what I was saying earlier, where I said that it's really important that you come up with your KPIs and questions first and build a tracking plan around that. Three events and a few properties that are tracked with thought and with advanced thinking are better than a 30 event tracking plan that quote, tracks everything. This type of approach is efficient. It gets you what you need with a minimal amount of engineering work. And yes, the example I showed you is longer, but it was gonna take quite a while to build out this whole thing, but the process is going to be the exact same thing. You know, if we had questions that were like, hey, which share method is used the most by users, then we would have video shared as an event and the share method as a property over there. And one thing that I really like to do is look through your events after you've created all of them and see if there's some properties for existing events that would make sense if they were on other ones as well. For example, video category being on video viewed, like we should probably have it be on video published as well. We can even put video duration on video view too because these are just general video attributes so we probably want them to be on every event. And also I like to organize my events so that they're sort of you know divided by flow. So it's like sign up is the first thing that happens and then video viewed and published and all these video actions would be next. Now that you have this tracking plan, you take it and you hand it to your engineering team so that they can implement it. If you're a product manager making a product requirements document, I recommend just having a section in there for analytics and in it include a link to this tracking plan or just embed a table containing all of this information. Alternatively, you can create a ticket containing this info in your agile development platform like Jira or Linear and assign it to your engineer. Once you've implemented and QA everything, you can then go use your product analytics tool like Mixpanel or Amplitude to build out reports that actually answer your questions. Again, if you aren't sure how to do that part, I'll put a link in the video description to my video that shows you how to build Mixpanel dashboards alongside with another link to the video that shows how to come up with the metrics like the ones that I came up with. By the way, if you have any questions on anything I've covered in this video, just leave a comment asking your question. I regularly review them and respond to them. So 
That covers the creation of a tracking plan, which is one of the most important skills you can have as a product manager or product analyst, and also one of the most rare skills. So you'll get a lot out of learning how to do this correctly. If you want to get even better at it, check out the link in the video description to a course that contains a whole section dedicated to tracking plan development, as well as other sections for how to develop key metrics like the ones we used in this video, how to build dashboards using tools like Mixpanel, and best practices of setting up split tests. The videos I have on this channel are kind of summaries that get you up and running real quickly on the topic. But then the complete course that I have on my website, it's what gets you to become an expert because there are under chapter exercises that you can complete as well as exercise solutions, more in-depth videos, as well as a final project that's optional, but you can complete it if you want to receive a certificate. Basically everything you'll need in order to become a product analytics expert. Thanks again for watching one of my videos. Have a great rest of your day.